We have the opportunity to make a habit of empathy, to recognize ourselves in each other. One of the things that I experience when empathy is present is that the blocks to action, which does not exclude, are removed. So one of the ways when I, that, I, that I can identify that empathy is present is that whatever is impeding action is gone. And that the quality that that action has is that it tends to include, it connects, it brings pieces together, it resolves what appears to be knotted and, and bound. Yeah, and I, I can remember a situation in a, in a practice group where someone came and they said, you know, I'm so pissed off with my boyfriend. I came home last night and I've been working all day and he sat on the sofa watching TV, switching channels, and there's this huge pile of washing up. And she had her pain that she felt around that hurt, and she felt much better, and it was great. And she went home, and everything for her seemed, in her experience of that, very, very different. And the next week, we gathered again in the practice group, and she said, I can't believe it, I'm so upset. I came home, and my boyfriend sat on the sofa, and, you know, he's smoking and watching television and there's this huge pile of washing up. And she gets her pain hurt again. And the next week I'm thinking, I'm not so sure what's going to happen. And sure enough, there she is saying, you know, the same thing happened again. So, listening to someone's pain, which is a very supportive, regenerative experience for many of us, is a really key element. But for me, it's not the piece that I'm looking for. It's not something that removes the blocks to action yet. If it doesn't translate into a new relationship between these two people, uh, uh, an initiative, uh, taking back the power to actually express myself and, and create change, that's what I like to reserve the word empathy for. So I can listen as a friend to someone else and that can be very valuable. But there's something really unique about empathy and that it clears the things that are blocking action and it connects me both inside and to other people in a way that is transformative. But I like the word empathy. The, it, it suggests to me more than an understanding of what has happened to someone else, but almost like a lending of my sense of them to them that helps them reconnect with themselves in a deeper way. And when we really reconnect internally, we discover that we have a wealth of options and we, uh, the, the joy of life is the engagement in what's happening around us to celebrate and support those things that are aligned with our values and to engage with those things that aren't and invite them to transform. So that's what I'm looking for, that inner connection that leads to action. The inner connection is within myself and it's with that that I'm enabled to engage with someone else in a way that doesn't involve me being submissive to them or attempting to dominate them. So that's why I say it's, it clears the blocks to action which, are in, action which is inclusive. So I, I describe empathy as, as one of the conditions that enables me to connect internally and therefore to act in a way that doesn't create separation and distance, but brings people together and creates power, basically, by, through partnership, mm. through the, the, the desire to co-create the conditions that we want to live in. The, I think when the word was unusual, you know, it's still very recent, and, mm. and w when it was unusual, I, I like speaking about it. So in communities in which that word is not common, I very much like being able to identify the specific dynamic that the restorative circles are, uh, are creating the conditions for, and naming it so that people can start to think about it more consciously. But in other communities where the word is used a lot and sometimes used to describe something which for me doesn't have the same power as that which I'm interested in supporting, then I, ten I tend not to use it because when people hear it, they think, oh, I already know what that is. So, so you're thinking people hear it. That's where you verbalize feelings and needs for the other person. Mm -hmm. And that might be a very powerful inner guide for me as I lend my presence to someone else as a p support for them to reconnect internally with themselves. But I don't see that or anything else as being a recipe for empathy. I don't want to reduce empathy to any particular way of speaking or any particular uh, 
trick or procedure that I'm going to use with other people. Because it's fundamentally to do with me being fully, authentically present with you in such a way that that quality of presence becomes almost contagious. And you are, your organism is supported in reconnecting inside and therefore able, willing, engaged to take the next step. So it, uh, you didn't bring it up here because I'm just speculating. There's a lot of people that have NVC experience and they have a certain definition of it and you thought it would confuse the discussion? Well, in my understanding of NVC and my understanding of what I'm doing in restorative circles, the quality of empathy that we're talking about is exactly the same. But as NVC becomes more well known and lots of us have because all of us in the end have a partial understanding of it, then I've seen a lot of examples of people doing something that they call empathy, which in my experience doesn't increase the degree of self-connection for the person who's receiving that presence. And that's the quality that I'm really interested in. So I don't mind if we don't call it empathy, but for now I use the word empathy to describe that quality.